Hi, this is a video on how to use a protractor. Whilst you might think that that's a really easy skill, there are some parts that people do find confusing, so it's worth going over. So firstly, let's start with the different parts of a protractor. So the bottom line down here is called the baseline. And here at where it meets the center of the protractor is called the crosshairs. Now there are two scales on a protractor. The outside scale goes from zero all the way around 180 degrees and the inside scale starts here at zero on the right hand side and goes all the way around to 180 degrees. So when we go to measure an angle the first thing we do is line the baseline up with the bottom arm of the angle. Now that's not quite in the right position. What I've got to do is move the crosshairs over until it meets the vertex of the angle like this. So you can see how the crosshairs there are in line with the pointy bit of the angle which is the vertex. Now all I've got to do is decide which scale to use and this is the part where people do find this a little bit tricky because there's two scales as we mentioned before there's the zero scale and the 180 but it's really simple you always start at zero you wouldn't logically start at 180 you would logically start at zero you've just got to choose whether it's the inside scale or the outside scale that starts at zero and once we do that we go around the angle, around the protractor, until I hit the other arm. And then I just read off the protractor, which is, in this case, 30 degrees. So this angle is 30 degrees. Let's try another one. I line up my protractor so that the crosshairs are in line with the pointy bit, the vertex of the angle. And then I look at the two scales that are here. I've got the zero scale and the 180 degree scale. In this case it's the outside scale that's the zero. I always start at zero. So once I've chosen my scale I go around the protractor until I hit the other arm and reading off this measurement it's going to be 46 degrees in this case for this angle. So now let's measure an obtuse angle. You would remember that an obtuse angle is an angle between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. Back in primary school you would have called them blunt angles but the correct mathematical term for them is obtuse and they're just as simple as measuring an acute angle. I put my protractor on the angle, I line up the crosshairs so that it's in line with the vertex and I have a look over here at the two different scales that I have. I always start at zero, I go all the way around the protractor until I hit the other arm and I'm reading that to be 143 degrees. Now this is one question where people do sometimes get confused and I've seen some people do quite an odd thing where they come over here and start measuring from this side here which you know is really strange but let's just pretend for a moment that we did get this one wrong and that I started over on the right hand side and I went around the protractor until I got is that about 37 degrees? Well I ought to know straight away that that's not right. Why? Remember when I said an obtuse angle is between 90 and 180 degrees? It can't be 37 degrees. So at that point you probably ought to know, if you're always checking your answers, you ought to know that you've made a mistake. The big mistake that they've made of course is they haven't started here where the baseline of the angle lines up with the protractor. Starting over here, there's no line there. You're actually measuring something between a blank and a line. So that's just something to look out for. So here's another one to measure. This one's a little bit skew if so we've got to turn the protractor in this case so that the baseline lines up with the bottom of the angle and the crosshairs are on the vertex. But it's exactly the same apart from that. So I have a look here. I've got the 0 and the 180. I always start at 0. I go around and I'm going to read that as 51 degrees. And finally, one more obtuse angle. This one's sort of upside down. You can place the protractor either way in this particular example, but I'm going to place it like this. So I've lined up. You can see I've lined up the baseline with the bottom of the angle here and the crosshairs with the vertex. Now I'm having a look here 
at which scale I'm going to use. I'm going to start at zero and go around. And so I'm reading that to be 125 degrees. Now let's have a look at drawing an angle. Drawing an angle is pretty simple. Well, first thing we're going to do is just draw a line. And you can draw that anywhere that you like on your page. I would suggest that a horizontal line is easiest to draw an angle with, but it doesn't really matter. Then I place my protractor so that the baseline lines up with that line and the crosshairs are sitting here at one end. Depending on which side you want the vertex, I'm going to have the vertex here. So I'm putting the crosshairs, crosshairs where the vertex is going to be. I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to go around until I find 60 degrees and I'm just going to put a dot. Then I take the protractor away and I join up those lines. And there's my angle of 60 degrees. Now we tend to write it like this. You sort of put a little arc in between the two lines and then you write 60 degrees next to it. Let's draw an obtuse angle. Start with a line. Choose which side you want the vertex to go and put the protractor there. So I've lined up the crosshairs with the vertex. Find the zero scale which is here, where am I, just here, go all the way around until you find the 120 and put a dot. Move the protractor and draw the line. So there's my angle and then just to finish it off I draw an arc and put 120 degrees. What about reflex angles? Do you remember what reflex angles are? They're like elbows. So it's more than 180 degrees, anywhere between 180 and 360, 360 being the full revolution. You can use a 360 degree protractor if you want. Most people don't have them though. Mostly in a high school you buy a 180 degree protractor. So we're going to work out how to do that with 180 degrees, which is this one. So here's an example. I can tell this is a reflex angle because it's got this line all the way around here. If it was the acute angle it wouldn't have that and it would mean this angle here. So I've got to measure all of that. Now the easiest thing to do is to do an extension of one of the lines. It doesn't really matter which one. I'm going to choose the horizontal line because it makes my life a little bit easier. But that there is 180 degrees. Remember 180 degrees is a straight angle. So now all I have to do is measure this part here. So I'm going to put my protractor upside down. I'm lining it up with the baseline and the crosshairs are in line with the vertex. Now this is a bit tricky. I'm going to start from the dotted line over here. Okay, I know that there is a line over here as well, but if I went around that I'd be measuring the acute angle. I don't want to do that. I want to measure this obtuse angle that's all the way around here. So you've got to have your thinking caps on with this one. Start at zero, go all the way around. I have got 144 degrees. And remember I had the 180 as well. And so I've got to add those together which gives me 324 degrees. Now there is another way to do this. I wonder if you've been thinking about another way. I could have measured the acute angle. If I'd measured this angle here I would have got 36 degrees. What good does that do me? Well I know that a revolution is 360. So if I take off the 36 degrees I end up with 324 degrees. You might like that method better. Mathematics there's often different ways to do a question and you have to do the one that you're comfortable with as long as you're getting the right answer. So now we need to draw a reflex angle of 210 degrees. I'm going to do this the same way that I was just speaking about. I'm going to find out what angle makes it up to 360 degrees, draw that one and then mark the reflex angle. So the first thing I do is set up a sum or a subtraction rather um, 360 degrees take 210 is 150. So I'm going to draw an angle of 150 degrees. How do I do that? 
we put a line, we line up the protractor, put a dot at the 150 degree mark and draw in the other line. And there's my 150 degrees there. I actually don't want the 150 degrees do I? I want the reflex angle that's on the other side. So all I do is mark this angle. It's a good idea when you're drawing angles, especially reflex ones, that you use pencil. That way you can rub out any extra lines that you use. But there's my reflex angle of 210 degrees. Okay, there is PDF on my website. The website is www.mastering-mathematics.com um, so you can print that out and there are 10 questions. The last two questions are challenge questions so they're the reflex angle questions um, and there is a copy also of the answers on the website.